Confirming death for me was one of the most unsettling things I had to do as a very new doctor, and despite not having had much, if any, training on it, you're just kind of expected to get on with it and do it, you know you're the doctor, go confirm the death. And one of the things I really try to do with this channel is establish a dialogue with students, patients, the public about what being a doctor is like, how things are from the other side, and it's not something I've talked about much on here, but I think it's important that we have these conversations. So today I'm gonna to talk you through how doctors diagnose death, as we say technically, and how that feels, what it's like. Now it's important to say this is obviously a sensitive topic, we will be discussing death, dead bodies and grief. And if that's something that you're not ready to hear about right now, please feel free to pause and come back when you're in the right headspace. But confirmation of death, diagnosis of death, they're all the same thing. It's the formal appraisal and decision being made that someone has died. And that seems like a slightly strange thing to say, as I think many people could probably identify that someone was dead, but there is a systematic manner in which that has to be done for formal and legal reasons. So in England, a doctor, or in some circumstances a registered nurse or a police officer can formally confirm death. But in practice, what I'm going to be talking about today, if you're the on-call doctor working in a hospital, often at night, you will be the one called to deal with it. So the first thing to say is that if there are family present, then usually I would introduce myself. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Burton, I'm the doctor on call. I need to formally confirm the death and I ask if they would like to be there while I do it and it's been a completely mixed bag to be honest probably about half and half in my experience as to whether families or some family members but not all might choose to be there while this happens or they may not they may want to leave the room and have a few minutes to let me get on with what I need to do so you start by washing your hands and wearing PPE just like you would with a live patient confirming using the wristband attached to the patient's wrist or sometimes their ankle that it is the right person and if I've not met that person before I would check with a ward nurse or an HCA that was looking after them that it is indeed the right person. First, again, just like with any patient, you would check for a verbal response. So, hello, Mr. Smith, can you hear me? My name's Ollie, I'm one of the doctors. And then once you've done that, fundamentally we are looking for signs of circulatory system death, and that consists of a few things. The first is the absence of a central pulse, which is usually the carotid artery that we check, which can be felt between the larynx and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, in the neck on yourself, you can usually feel it pulsating. The second is absence of heart sounds on auscultation of the heart with a stethoscope, and then absence of respiratory sounds. So you're listening over the lung fields to check that there's no evidence of breathing, again, using your stethoscope. If there was, you would hear air moving in and out of the chest cavity. And then finally, general signs of life, breathing, movements, other things that someone who was alive would normally do. And then once you've done this for five minutes, trying to identify any signs of life, then you have some final checks to do. The first is that you're checking for bilateral absence of the pupillary reflexes. So instead of reacting to light, shrinking down and constricting like we would normally expect pupils to do in response to bright light, in a dead person, the pupils will stay fixed and dilated on both sides. They won't change at all when a light is shone in them. Because the circuits that would control that, the brainstem reflexes, are no longer working. The next is absence of the corneal reflexes on both sides, which is tested with cotton wool. So normally, if you touch the eyeball with a piece of cotton wool, the eyelids will close and blink in response, and again. Then lastly, no motor response to supraorbital pressure, and what that is, is a squeeze to the ridge just above the eye. It's not painful, but it will be uncomfortable in someone who is alive and they would very much try and stop you doing it. We use this as a formal way to try and measure people's consciousness when they're alive. Then once all of this is done, you should note the specific time that your assessment has ended, the patient can be declared dead and you document your assessment, which should include obviously a comprehensive summary of the time you attended and why, a concise summary of all of the assessments you've made, signed off with your name, your grade and your GMC number. And I think when it's your first time or you're not used to it, seeing a dead body can be really unnerving as in a very obvious way. They don't look like live people and there is a, a stillness about a room when a patient has died. And I've talked about this, I think, previously, but something that 
I've often seen is that the nurse will have opened the window and I'm honestly not sure whether this is purely to let the air in or uh, to let the soul out as is the answer you often get when you ask people but it's definitely a thing that still happens. So that's a brief overview of what is actually happening when a doctor is confirming death and if that does happen to a family member, a relative or a friend of yours that dies in hospital that's what you might expect and it's not an easy topic but I hope that was informative and useful as, as an insight and if there are other similar things that you've wondered about about why doctors do particular things or why we say things in a particular way uh, please do let me know that's what this channel is about and uh, we can try and cover it in a future video thank you very much for watching as always please be sure to hit the like button for me leave a comment subscribe don't forget to go and check out my website ollieburton.com where you can read all the articles, scripts and tutorials associated with this channel. Thank you very much, take care and I'll see you next time.